today's episode of Straight Talk, I am pleased to welcome John Schaff. He's the Director of Government Services and Training with Spartan Chemical Company. Thank you for joining us today, John. Thanks for having me, Jeff. You know, we have a really cool topic to develop, an important one, debunking disinfection myths. Now, John, I don't know anyone who doesn't like a good debunking. I know I do. So I'm looking forward to this. Let's start with this. What prompted you on your debunking journey? Well, here at, here at Spartan, we've always thought clean for safety, clean for health, and let's make clean simple. And in the last two years, there's been a lot of uncertainty, fear, uh, unknown, and people have questioned, what am I supposed to be doing out there? And lots of myths have cropped up, and we felt it was time to get that record set straight. So let's get into a few of these myths. John, are you ready? Sure am, Jeff. Okay, myth number one, here it is. The stronger a disinfectant is, the better. What would you say to that? If I was going to put this tiny little finishing nail into a wall, would I use a hammer like this to do it? I would venture to guess the answer is no, right, Jeff? You probably wouldn't wanna hold that nail with your hand, would you? while I was driving it in, absolutely not. And so with that in mind, the same thing applies with disinfectants. There are disinfectants that have specific jobs and tools are used for tools that have different levels. And we use different disinfectants for different purposes. Uh, and, and in part of it is, is remembering that we are cleaning for health and we are disinfecting where we need to, but we're also focusing on cleaning first and making that our first step, followed by our disinfection process. We have general use disinfectants, healthcare appropriate disinfectants, some that are used widely in the hospital and healthcare facility, some that are used in targeted applications for target organisms because they carry different materials and they are also of different levels of safety for both the user and the surfaces we work with. So with that in mind, if I used the strongest disinfectant that I had and only used it everywhere, my challenge would be is, is I'm probably able to actually do some damage to some surfaces and, and, uh, and create issues uh, that we weren't in unintended consequences we weren't anticipating, which means more work, uh, more rinsing, and those types of things. Good information, John. And I'll tell you one thing, I won't hold that nail for you if you're going to swing that hammer. So you're oh, on your own. I don't know why, Jeff. <laughs> I want to keep my finger, fingers. So I don't blame you. And the same thing, same thing applies when we're talking about the disinfectants, right? I don't want to use my 12 pound sledgehammer when all I need is a finishing hammer. Makes sense. Good illustration. Okay. That was myth number one. Myth number two, the CDC is the ultimate authority on disinfection. That's, that's, a, that's a great question, Jeff, uh, and that's a great myth that's out there is, is everyone looks to the CDC, they type cdc.gov and go and say, hey, the CDC says, the CDC says I have to have this on my list. The CDC says, the CDC is actually our recommending agency. The actual regulatory agency that we deal with for disinfectants in, uh, in our industry, and actually in general, is the Environmental Protection Agency. They oversee all the testing that goes on for a disinfectant and the approval process, and then what's on your label. And so the EPA is the regulatory agency that does that part of it. And then the CDC works in conjunction with the EPA to help put out recommendations for the users. So when you go see that, it's not that the CDC requires you to do this and the CDC requires, it's not, they're recommending processes and programs. And actually the EPA does the, right, uh, does the oversight of the regulatory portion of that. Remember this, the label is the law and the EPA is overseeing that part of it. Makes sense. I could see why some would be confused with that second myth. So thank you. Yeah. Myth number three, the biggest challenge with disinfecting is finding a disinfectant that kills the virus of concern. Is this true? That's a great, that's a great uh, question because we've all been worried about SARS-CoV-2 for the last two years. And, and candidly, one of the biggest challenges that we have with that is, is 
when it hit the market, it was unknown. It hadn't been tested. It, it was new. And when it's new, we don't have the information about it. But what we did find quickly was this, what the makeup of that virus was. And it being a coronavirus, we were able to use benchmarking. And that's what the EPA does when there's not a testing protocol in place yet. They will benchmark pathogens that are harder to eradicate than the pathogen of concern until they get a protocol in place. And then once the testing process is in place, then they test for that specific pathogen. And that's what happened and occurred with us in uh, with SARS-CoV-2 as an example. They used as a benchmark products that had a higher efficacy claim, which tended to be a little more specialized than a general use disinfectant, which is what we're basically allowed to use today provided you do the testing, but that's what's effective against SARS-CoV-2 on non-porous surfaces these days. So yes, that's, that's how it happens. Now remember, label is the law. Once that protocol is in place and that process is in place, if it's not on the label, that's not compliant with that, that process. Myth number four, electrostatic sprayers and UV disinfection devices eliminate the extra step of cleaning. <laughs> what do you say to that? That's a good, a good one, uh, uh, Jeff. We've got a lot of folks that are, are thoroughly confused in this area. And the reason we're thoroughly confused is, is because of fear and the unknown. And so we're going to grab a hold of everything we can. And kind of like that 12-pound sledgehammer, we start looking at additional tools. What can we use to help here and help there? While additional technology may not be harmful, it doesn't replace, it doesn't replace proper cleaning first. And then application of your disinfectant appropriately. Um, and in the case of like UV, that's an extra step of disinfection after I've properly cleaned that surface. So what we wanna do is, is we wanna make sure once again, that we don't confuse disinfection with cleaning and disinfection or cleaning first and following it with the disinfection process. All good points, John. Anything else you'd like to share with the industry? Well, what I like to share with the industry is remember this, clean for safety, clean for health, make cleaning simple, but clean first and disinfect where you need to. Well, great information, John. Thank you for sharing this. Where can people get more information from Spartan? Thanks for asking, Jeff. People can get additional information from uh, spartanchemical.com as well. Click on the clean check link to get more training processes uh, and surf the site a little bit for additional resources ranging from SARS-CoV-2 to any other pathogen of your concern and as well, your cleaning needs. Remember, we make clean simple and there's another simple way and that is just to dial 800-537-8990 and ask for your local Spartan regional manager and they'll come to your site.